John Herbst has a gift for connecting people to the past. The New Jersey native discovered his love of history as a child by listening to his grandparents' stories about their family who immigrated from Italy and Germany. John began his career as a high school history teacher and then transitioned to the world of public history through jobs with the Patterson Museum and New Jersey Historical Society. John soon became the founding director of the American Labor Museum. Right from the start, it was apparent that John was at the beginning of an important career because he was just a, committed to public history, to education, and of course there was a big story to be told here that hadn't been told before. He converted the Bado House National Landmark into a museum. The home was a rallying point for thousands during the Patterson Silk Strike of 1913. John made his mark with an acclaimed three-site collaborative exhibition, Life and Times in Silk City. John left the Silk City for the Steel City of Pittsburgh. Well, we made it. As executive director of the Historical Society of Western Pennsylvania, he undertook an immense challenge to move the organization's small headquarters to a huge historical ice warehouse. I think it's a revolution, not an evolution. It went from a relatively small organization to a great big one. The size of that building is staggering. John's leadership helped raise $55 million for capital and operating costs for the new History Center. I've always thought of John as a visionary and as a transformative individual in our field of public history. And through his perseverance, he sold that idea to the establishment of Pittsburgh, including one of his big champions was David McCullough, the uh, great historian who's a native of Pittsburgh. John grew the staff exponentially and shaped the center into a national model. I think he's just the best team leader. He, he knows how to select a good team. Uh, he knows how to treat the team. He makes the most of every person he comes into contact with. He uses their skills and their talents as effective resources. After a decade, John headed for the Midwest, landing the top job at Connor Prairie. John is absolutely considered one of our wisest owls. <laughs> he is uh, somebody who came to our community with already a tremendous amount of experience. So he wasn't coming to learn his management style. He was coming to develop it. Well, I think one of the things he brought to Connor Prairie in his early years was a sense of vision and new directions, a deep commitment to engaging the public and to bringing even more life to a great, lively place. John added a Native American camp and a working Victorian farm and he also launched programs to give a voice to underrepresented groups. One of the things that John believed in was diversity, and the Follow the North Star program was very interesting. It was done at night, and it replicated how slaves were able to escape slavery, and how they were housed along the, the railroad, as they call it. Connor Prairie's attendance grew, as did his staff's respect and appreciation for his efforts. John was one of those people that actually came out on the grounds to see, you know, what his staff was doing, and, and I love that. But John's time at Connor Prairie was tough. He and the board set the wheels in motion to settle a 30-year dispute with Earlham College over funding and governance, a step that cost him his position but eventually won the museum its independence. It's not my fondest time of my life, but the bonding and so on that we went through is something that will live forever in my memory. And the bonding that John had with, with his board and his staff, uh, it, it was exceptional. We were united. John went on to lead the Indiana State Museum and then landed at the Indiana Historical Society. He took over an organization with an impressive building and archives. I've seen three previous CEOs, but John has been the person who had that big vision for the Historical Society. He looked at what was happening in the field and what was happening at the Historical Society, and he wanted to make it bigger. 
John was determined to make the space more welcoming to visitors and bring the IHS collections to life. The result was the award-winning Indiana Experience. To have somebody come in and say, yeah, I'm, I'm new here, I don't know your collections, but I know there's material in there that could really, really excite people and really convey our messages. And I want the public to experience the collections the way you do. John's work has garnered numerous awards and national attention, and he's not afraid to roll up his sleeves. One thing I always tell people is that, you know, don't let that John's three-piece suit CEO position fool you because he works just as hard as anybody else in this whole establishment. John's example has not been lost on professionals he has guided. One of the things that John was very strong with was mentoring, getting everybody around the table, whether you were in marketing or exhibits or development, and letting the great ideas rise to the top. John has also brought great ideas to life in his own backyard over the years, where numerous publications have captured stunning images of his personal gardens. His knowledge, skill, and generosity have ignited inspiration and amusement. The most memorable thing that John ever did, he just comes right in my backyard with a, with a, with a shovel, and on, in his shovel are um, some uprooted raspberry cuttings. Without a word, he walked into my garden, and he, he, he found a spot, and he, and he dug a hole, and he dropped the real raspberry cuttings in, and then he, he turned around and left, and he never said a word the whole time. I think that you, you could make an analogy between the way he tends his garden and the way he tends his organizations, that he likes to see things flourish and grow and bloom and succeed. So he's really grown a beautiful garden here, and we're grateful to him for, for everything he's done. Prior to his departure, John has chosen to tackle one more significant goal, to raise funds to retire the History Center's building debt. By securing a multi-million dollar matching grant from Lilly Endowment, he is determined to place IHS on solid financial footing. I think it would have been easy for him to, you know, celebrate the success of the many projects that are already underway, but to really take something like that on says a lot about his perseverance and also his love for this place and for all of the people and all of the constituents that you serve. I think it is commendable and admirable and also maybe a little crazy. <laughs> One of my uh, favorite things about John is his fearlessness, um, his professional fearlessness to take on what some might think is impossible, and we're better because of it. Indiana's history is better because of it.